Welcome to the Blind Justice Podcast, where you discover the insider secrets of injury and accident cases, and all of your law questions get answered. Now, here's your host, Chicago injury lawyer, Scott DeSalvo. Hey guys, it's Scott DeSalvo back with another podcast and my amazing podcast host, Amelia Finnefrock. Um, back at you, continuing the Q&A. Anytime I hear your intro music, I just think of you in a tuxedo, like Mad Men style, just like looking at the camera, like just flicking his neck back and forth, just like suit. And then you do like a tumble and a roll, and then you like just click your gun. And then you've you're been like, watching too many spy movies, hundred <laughs> percent. No, it's sort of like uh, like a Johnny Carson, yeah, you know, okay. like an old Johnny Carson like Tonight Show thing. Mm-hmm. I should probably update it. I mean. It's pretty good. I, I it's think a little dated. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. I but mean, we if you were going to totally change it, version. what would you think? I mean, what what should we do? I'm thinking like, dun, 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 but like not More like that spy exact. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. listen, I'm Scott DeSalvo. Like something that says, I know what's up, but also like, I'll get to the bottom of it. But also like, look at this jawline. I think you're straight out of your mind, woman. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a nickel. Anyway, if I could hear what you're envisioning, I would still probably hate it. <laughs> Give but me at a week. least <laughs> <laughs> Give uh, me five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're continuing with the Q and A, but before we get into that, I wanted to ask you. We we talked a little bit a, a couple of podcasts ago about the band you were in and the music and yeah. what's the update on that? What what are you doing musically? Yeah. Something, I hope. Yeah, so we're all we're all recorded. We have everything done. We wrote like eight songs together. Um, we recorded it two weekends ago. So everything's done. It's just like sitting in the editing room. I'm really thankful I'm not in there because as you understand editing, it's a, it's a whole thing. So I'm like, all right, I'm done. That's your job. But um, yeah, so we're waiting on that. Um, I got picked for this cool uh cover band uh to audition for it's this like it's a i'm not even allowed to say the name because it's it's kind of a big deal um so i don't even know the name <laughs> what what style of music it's a it's a country cover band oh which, that's cool um, it's cool you know it's not my my favorite thing but um it'd be really cool exposure so well country these days is so much more like pop it is it totally is um taylor supposed started out as country can you believe that yeah right and now she's like I'm in you in trouble. But like, <laughs> that's how I uh, sing. No, no, right. I Even just listening to the popular country music, I mean, it's still got that twang to it. Yeah. But other than the twang, it's basically becoming very poppy. It is. It is. Which is interesting. It's an interesting alternative because a lot of people criticize more traditional pop these days as being not even pop. It's just R&B. It's so R and B influenced. That is so true. Yeah, so yes. I think it's good that there's some variation, uh, just some options, right? Right, right. Because so. like you know, R and B is great, but like you know, it shouldn't be everything. Exactly. Right. You know, I'm yeah. I'm gonna try and put a little kazoo <laughs> band together. Oh, all, all kazoos. That would be. Like the that's what I want for Christmas. I want you to come out with like a small kazoo album with like yeah, again like, with the tuxedo with right, the insta- jawline looking yeah. like soulfully like Listed. instead of Bert Bacharach <laughs> plays the hits on the piano, it's <laughs> I'll get like a velvet tuxedo. You're that ladies. <laughs> I'll have my kazoo. Like, like a crushed purple velvet tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. Just like Wow. The bad ideas just keep coming. Oh, and like a teal pocket square. Can you tell that we are in <laughs> Or around the holiday season. <laughs> we're ready. <laughs> yeah, we're, I think we're, we're, as we approach the end of the year here, I think we're about done with the seriousness. Yeah, no, but, but seriously, uh, a, an album where we both collaborate together. Cause there's some, there's a lot of talents that I, 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 I know you have. So we got to collaborate. And, yeah, and Kazoo create that for is the about the limit of my musical talent. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not sure you need me playing the canoe, uh, the canoe, playing the canoe. Mm. <laughs> We're done, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's a wrap. Um, <laughs> I don't think you need me playing the kazoo supporting you singing because you're a good singer. I don't know, but you know, I it need would be to, interesting. It would be cool. We'll think about yeah, it. Yeah, that 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 uh, we'll put that on the shelf for now. I can promise you that you're probably never going to hear me playing the kazoo while she sings well, on now this I podcast. Want to. Like, right. now it's we like a dare. <laughs> <laughs> now we just have to do it. <laughs> um, so. 
we're continuing the Q and A. I think I've said that three times. Yep. Do you want to take it away before <laughs> sure. this train gets yep, derailed before, again? Yep, before we're done, uh, <clears throat> my father was treated really badly in a nursing home. I complained to their staff, and they never stopped treating him like a piece of furniture. They fed him very aggressively, handled him very roughly, and basically paid no attention to his complaints. Then they dropped him and broke his hip. I want to sue them for the broken hip, but also for the bad treatment that they gave him. Is it possible to sue the nursing home for the abuse and rough treatment too? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Now I feel guilty for joking around that wow. much at the wow. beginning. <laughs> completely <was> inappropriate. <laughs> we talk about a change in uh, tone, I mean, but right? Our, it, yeah. A- everybody who calls me with a nursing home case, it's a somber, sad thing. It is. Right? There's no good way to lead into this. No, no. no. And no... Um, even more than the injury, I will be honest, I sense the emotional upset from people is primarily centered around the way the doctors and nurses and staff at the nursing home treated their family member. Right. Even more than they dropped him and broke his hip. Ugh. People are, are bec- they're very emotionally angry at the way the staff at the nursing home treats their family member and I don't blame them, yeah. right? It's horrible. It's a respect thing. It's a, well, and it's also this person you love who for most of your life was very different than the old and ill person living in the nursing home, right? right. Never needed help from anyone, could handle things for themselves. And now, you know, nobody wants to put a loved one in a nursing home. No. Like it's the last resort because you literally have no other options. You can't quit your job and stay at home and, and care for them 24-7, no. right? So it, it's never a joyful celebration no. when somebody's got to go to a nursing home. But it's a it's a harsh reality that we all feel guilty about, whether we admit it or not. Right. Um, newsflash, even if you keep your parent at home, when they're gone, you're going to feel guilty about not having done more for them, no matter how much you do. It's very true. So one thing I tell people is, Try to forgive yourself a little bit mm-hmm. going forward. But yeah. nursing homes are similar to like medical malpractice cases because in every nursing home, we need a minimum of two experts. We need hmm. a nursing home expert and we need a medical expert. The nursing home expert helps us establish what nursing home rules were broken. Okay. And then the medical expert provides a link between the injury and the negligence. So in other words, we need a doctor to say um, the pneumonia was caused by the technique of feeding him or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. You need, you always need testimony or almost always need testimony of a doctor to prove that the negligence caused the injury. So, Right out of the gate, before we even file a lawsuit, we're paying two outside experts to look at the case, expensive. review everything. Exactly. Lots of money. That's really expensive. So for a nursing home, you're talking a case before we even file a lawsuit, at least $10,000 in advanced case costs. Wow. If not more. And then when the lawsuit is filed, the meter really starts running because there's a million depositions you have to do. You have to depose all the doctors. You have to present the, your experts for deposition, right? So my point is, in cases like this, what, what an attorney is looking for is a large objective injury, right? Mm-hmm. A broken bone, a serious hospital stay, an, an emergency surgery, a repeated surgery, or a huge change in the person's outcome, right? So right. you an example of that would be your loved one is barely struggling enough to justify them living in a nursing home, and then they go from that to being unconscious and non-responsive Ugh. because of the negligence of the nursing home. Yeah. That's a big change. Right. And it's something that in front of a jury – I mean, look, jurors are humans too – But one of the rules when you're hearing a case as a juror is the judge will tell the jury, you are not allowed to let sympathy factor into it, Mm. right? Yeah. And so when you take sympathy away from treating your loved one, as you said, like a piece of furniture, the juror's hands are tied in awarding very much money for a caregiver at a nursing home being rude. So as much as it breaks our heart or makes us furious – 
those sorts <laughs> of insults don't add up to enough money no. to financially handle the c- case for a law firm, right? right? But when we got a broken bone, somebody who's non-responsive, somebody who needs surgery, right. some big thing like that, um, that's definitely large enough to fuel uh, a lawyer investing literally hundreds of hours I mean, wow. and tens of thousands. I mean, I, I, a friend of mine just just went to trial um, and I think he lost the trial oh. and he had invested over $300,000 in oh, case costs. That's a house. Yeah. A yeah. House. And so that's, that's the risk a lawyer has to take if they're willing to handle cases like this. So right? do a lot of injury lawyers hesitate when they see cases like this? Uh, they them? do, but, but even if they're willing to handle them, they want to know, uh, that it's a decent case and that there's an injury sure, large enough so that if they do recover, or scare the insurance company in enough into offering a settlement before the trial that the numbers are going to be big enough so that they can get their advanced case costs back right. and get an attorney's fee. Because look, if an attorney advances, let's say fifty thousand dollars, that's a lot of money. That's that's like giving the client a fifty thousand dollar loan mm. on their case, right? And all they do is they get their money back. They don't get interest. Mm. So getting case costs back. If all a lawyer does is get his case costs back, he didn't get paid anything for his time. Right. So you right. could have two, three hundred hours uh. on a case and you don't get anything back. But look, that that's why every lawyer has to evaluate a case right. and make a decision for him or herself. Right. I'm just here telling this person who had this unfortunate event with their father that, you know, I think a broken hip is absolutely something. Right. That the average nursing home attorney right. is going to be willing to take. Absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, I, I, mean, I have a couple of of hip cases in my office now, oh, wow. and you know, you you definitely are willing to take them. So yeah. I would say definitely talk to a lawyer about a case so that they can evaluate it for you. But you're not without hope. You know, you can mm-hmm. report bad treatment to the nursing home itself, and you can also there's a toll free number. I don't have it in front of me, but you can get it on their website. It's their, it's the Illinois Department of Public Health, and they have a toll-free number where you can call and report um, bad conduct or bad behavior at a nursing home. Right. And the state of Illinois actually has a staff that investigates it. That's so. So if you're good. if you're talking about just nursing home not being careful enough, not being nice, being right. rude and rough with your loved one, I would report them to the Illinois Department of Public Health, and I'd also consider if it's at all an option getting them out of that nursing home. Right. You know, go visit another couple Mm -hmm. of nursing homes and maybe get them into a different place where they're nicer. Right. Um, Yeah. I mean, that's your family's life. You know, their day-to-day life is is there. Yeah. And and honestly, do you really want to keep your loved one in a nursing home when they've been treated that way? And then those same people who treat your loved one poorly now find out that you reported them to the state. When you're not around... Are they going to treat your loved one better or are they going to treat them worse? Ugh, yeah. Right? That's yeah, a fear. I, I'm always worried about revenge in those situations. Yeah. So if your loved one has been hurt or you have questions about a nursing home case, please feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to answer your questions whether there's a case or not. Free, no obligation. I hope this information helped you. I'm sorry you're in this situation, but mm. – um, you know, you're doing what you can. You have to start with forgiving yourself yep, and realizing you have limits mm-hmm. and um, call if you have any questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks for listening, folks. Um, have a great week. We'll catch you at the next podcast. See you then. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for listening. I truly hope that the information in the podcast helps you no matter the situation you find yourself in. But you might need more answers or some more direct help. So there are three ways for you easily to find out more and to get help. If you call my toll-free 24-hour helpline, 888-HURT-318, you'll have a couple of options. 888-HURT-318 is my toll-free 24-hour telephone line. You can call that number and speak with my team night or day. First, you can call 888-HURT-318 and you can speak to me for a free consultation about your case or situation. That's always free and no obligation. Second, you can tell the operator that you'd like a free copy of my injury DVD and book. I created the DVD and book and I give it away for free to injured people who need answers but who might not be ready to talk to a lawyer yet. Same deal, 100% free, 100% no obligation. 
information. Third and finally, you can check out my YouTube channel for informative videos about the injury case and claims process. Or check out my other podcasts for more information and interesting interviews with people who know different things about various aspects of the law. I've put all of this together to help you and answer your questions. Now, you can also help me, and I hope that you will. If you enjoyed the podcast and if it helped you at all, please subscribe. And if you can, take a minute and please post a positive review of the show. If you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you know anyone who might enjoy the podcast, please spread the word and share it on Facebook. It's my mission to spread good information to as many people as possible. And your liking and reviewing and subscribing to the podcast helps me get the word out. Thanks again. This podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. It doesn't substitute for consulting with a lawyer. If you have a case, speak with a lawyer right away. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Or if you'd like to see more of my videos, click subscribe. Thanks again.